Hello you little crackers, how are you diddling today? Today I'm talking about anything else other than that stupidity. We'll talk all about it on the other side. So whilst I was communicating with the emissaries, I said to them, can we talk about anything else except what's going on around us? Because quite frankly, I'm up to here. I don't know how you feel, but I'm up to here with it. I am indeed. And they said, would you like us to give you a little analogy? I said, yes, indeed. They said, well, your situation, you were rather like somebody who has gone to the zoo and who just spends the entire day looking into the monkey holding, the area with the monkeys, as they were talking to me. They said, if you stand and you watch monkeys for a long time, what's gonna happen is you're going to see things that can't be unseen. You're gonna be saying, oh, look at the monkey. Oh, look, he's got a banana. What is the monkey doing with that banana? Things like that. Yeah. Oh, look, the monkey's putting his little finger up in the air. What is he, where's he putting that finger? That's basically what you're gonna see if you look into the monkey cage. And they said, the zoo's filled with lots of other beautiful things. Why don't you move away from the monkey cage and go and have an ice cream? Go and have a coffee, sit down, have a walk, go and look at something beautiful. And then when you're ready, when you've got your resources back, go back and look at the monkey cage. And I think this is where, and they're right, of course. They're always right. Well, I don't know, but that's just my feeling. That's where I've been. I stare far too much at the monkey cage. If you're looking at monkeys all the time, all you're gonna see is monkey behavior. Naughty monkeys, Cheeky monkeys, silly monkeys, monkeying about. And that's basically, you know, if, if every time I pick up my phone and go in Telegram, all I can see is monkeys just going and saying and doing stupid things. So that's what they said. That's what they said. So moving away, so I'm going to go and have an ice cream. I'm going to have a, I don't drink coffee. I don't eat ice cream, but metaphorically, I'm going to have an ice cream and a coffee. You probably have a fag, sit down, look at the sky, watch the birds fly over and try and put what I've seen in that monkey cage happen out of my mind. And so I'll move on to give you the message that I got from the Jesus energy. And I asked them, I said, have you got a message to give me? or would you like me to ask you a question? They said, entirely up to you. Do you want to ask us a question? I said, yeah, why not? In your opinion, where are we? Where are we? What's happening? And they said this, these were their words. The, very, the, the Jesus energy I find is even more kind of, it's not so much poetic, the language they use, but very, very much biblical compared to the emissaries. And they said, we are right now at the culmination, at the fulfillment of the prophecies. We're in the most important time and a time that's been planned for eons. Literally, they said eons and then they added on so many timelines. We've been heading toward this moment. And then because I'd been talking to the emissaries about dancing, I still had the dancing metaphor in my mind and they said, we're at the end of the dance. And that can feel a bit lonely sometimes. But they said, remember, we are always with you and we are always there if you call on us, how many times have I heard this? All you need to do is call on Jesus' name, all right? I tell you where I heard it the other day, when uh, people were taught, a, a guy who's done so much research into alien abduction, and he actually says that rather than alien abduction, it's demonic possession, okay, or demonic interference because he said the only, th the only thing that, the only correlation in all of the stories of the people who have stopped it is when they've used Jesus' name or they've recited something from the Bible, but with Jesus' name in it. And they said, as soon as you mention Jesus' name, it stops. And he said, not Allah, 
not Buddha, not Krishna, Jesus. Okay? So the Jesus energy said, all you need to do is call on us and we'll be there. Call on our name and we'll be there. And they reminded me the story of the footprints in the sand. And I think I've told that story you a while ago. Can you remember the story? And it's a story that I find extremely moving. And every time that I, that I think of it, I'm moved by it. And it's a story of the man who's looking in a dream, looking at his journey through life. And he looks at the beginning and he sees that there are two sets of footprints. His footprints, somebody else's in the sand. And then as he looks, he notices that sometimes there's only one set of footprints. And he turns to God in his dream. And he and turns to God and he said, God, you said that you would always be with me. Why is it that sometimes you've left me and there's only one set of footprints in the sand? And God said, ah, I didn't leave you. That was when I had to carry you. And I think that's where we are. Sometimes don't feel bad about not having the energy to carry on, to feel that it's just too much, it's overwhelming. It is. It really is sometimes. Sometimes it's just very hard to keep going. Oh, it's very hard to keep going and keep upbeat. You know, we, we are the awakened souls who have come on the journey. We're on journey within, journey to God and all of that. And sometimes it's fucking so hard, isn't it? And yet, and yet, we have help. We don't have to do it on our own. But you know what we have to do? We have to accept that we've got help. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes. Sometimes, egoically, you know, we believe we've got to do it all. We've got to do it ourselves. I'm a Virgo, I don't like to get help. I'm a Virgo, so we like to do stuff. But sometimes we've got to say, hey, you know, I'm not strong enough for this on my own. I need help. And that's when we surrender and we hand ourselves over. And I found it to be a great relief sometimes. Sometimes I like to do it myself, of course. Sometimes I've got all the strength in the world, but every now and again, I feel like, oh, for God's sake, for God's sake, please help me. And then you wake up the next day and you're full of energy again and you're ready to start. The emissary said that uh, the times that we're in are only going to get more crazy. But they said that we are surrounded. We are, this world is filled with people who are constantly and instantly investigating every bit of stupidity that they come up with and showing it to be stupidity. That even in this last week, I think I saw uh, three things where they're just, they're, they're inventing stuff. You know, they've done it for a long time. They've done it for a bloody long time, but they're just inventing stuff so that they can blame us for the stuff that's happening that they've invented. But at the same time, what's happening is this massive shift in people because the government is the enemy now. And who would have thought, who would have thought when I was a kid, the government, well, you know, people, people would argue over who was the better. Now it's like people are arguing over who's the most stupid. Like, it's got to be him. No, it's not him. It's her. You know, it's like a totally different take on these government pariah spawn beings. And that's how people are starting to look at them. You know, people are scared, people are angry, and they know who's causing it. Before they weren't sure, before they were confused, but now because so many people are showing them up for what they are, so many people are showing, uh, I saw this video of, of the camera on the side, the, the pavement, and all of these darker people, actors, running toward the camera in the UK, running toward the camera, shouting and pumping the fists in the air. 
and the camera's just there recording it all. And I thought, I wonder what that's for. What news feed is that one for? Is that for the BBC to say, look what's happening? But that's like, you see that all the time. Everything that they do, they're getting called out for. They are really shit at it now. It isn't so much that they're shit at it, it's that we are shit hot at picking it up. Before, we never used to know. I mean, if, if you look at the very early uh, footage of the spacecraft going through space, and you look at that, and they, what they were saying it was real. This is a real spacecraft going through space. And you look at it now and you think, holy cow. That is the worst, I mean, that, you know, that is the worst type of CGI ever in the world. But at the time, people just swallowed that up, like, it's incredible, look at that. You know, how did they get that camera suspended in space, filming another spacecraft? We don't know, but we don't want to know. Because the government has our best interests at heart. And now, you know, like when you watch the, the, the people in the, um, the space station, you know, and there's men, there are men who have reasonably long hair, but their hair's perfectly flat to the head. Any woman, it's like standard, any woman, doesn't matter what kind, length of hair, they have it like sprayed so it goes, it just sticks up like that and it moves like that. It looks like uh, off The Simpsons, you know, uh, the, the mum off The Simpsons. And that's, the, the, they're like this, and I think, really? Really, is, is it, does this only affect, you know, weightlessness only affects women's hair, not men's. So they're just really poor at it. And they keep just doing it and they keep doing it quickly. This is the problem. They're doing it too quickly. They've got AI and AI can do things really quickly. The problem is, I think AI has got this incredible sense of humor. It's got an incredible sense of humor because when it creates like an audience, for example, uh, Kamal Harris, she created the, all of these, you know, all these people on the airport strip watching her come down. There was nobody there because there were no reflections on the plane at all. But all of these, AI had put all of these people in and behind her in, in one of her discourses, all of these people with, you know, Kamal is the best and all of that, I'm probably mispronouncing a name. And uh, when you look closely, AI's done this dreadful job, people with faces pulled to one side, people with the same face next to one another, like twins, but like seven pairs of identical twins, people with mutilated hands and everything. And but, you know, AI's much better than that. I've seen it do wonderful things. Why does it keep doing that? I think it's because it's got a sense of humor and it doesn't want to lie. Maybe deep down it's an honest little thing and it says, well, I'll have to just invent some stuff that's easily picked out. I mean, other than the fact that every person that was standing on the tarmac looking at the film had a white line around the body. I mean, it's just bizarre. But that, done a bit quickly and done a bit shitly and it, the credibility ratings are dropping like a lead balloon. So, there you are, I got back round to talking about that stupidity, but I started not. So, don't look too long at the monkeys. Have a break, have a coke and a smile, have a coffee, have a fag, and then go and see something else, and then return to the I mean, the monkeys are funny. They are funny, 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 but they do some horrible things, especially with the fingers and with the body parts. So, I love you all, and I'll speak to you all later. Bye-bye.